Hello, what's up? Cedric and CJ here, CR Wrestling Commentary. We'll be reviewing AEW's All Out pay per view event. And what an event it was! Oh, yeah, it was an event. Yeah, it was it was jam packed with with stuff. It was an event like a colonoscopy is an event. If you awake for it. Some do. Some do that. They awake for the colonoscopy. Yeah, I don't recommend it. So Okay. So uh this begins MJF versus Daniel Garcia. MJF enters the ring with the flag over his head that reads, Thank me later. Garcia attacks him from behind with very light punches to the back of the head. And, you know, as his hand was, because he was punching the back of his hand, which was holding his head. So it didn't really, didn't really do anything, right? Yeah. Garcia tries a power driver, but he shoved off. And this was a, this was a neck match. <laughs> this, they, they, they were, they were necking. <laughs> Everybody's neck was being tested. Yep. MJF hit a hangman's news net breaker. What I think would have been a decent finish or re-injury spot. MJF hit a nice guillotine DDT, DDT for a two count. MJF tried to suplex from the inside out, but Garcia hung on, basically did a net break on MJF while pulling him over. And they both laid on the floor, and on nine count, Garcia popped up and got in the ring and then started fighting like nothing happened. Garcia hit three dragon screw net breakers that looked really nice. Uh, MJF rips the head bandage off of um, Garcia, reopening the cut. MJF teased the super power driver, but Garcia reverses into a jumping DDT that gained a latent two count. They, they, you know, they had to sell for a little bit and then roll over. MJF hit the bouncing destroyer for a two count. And then Cedra said, this match is going too long for an opening match. It was opening match for no title. Because I admit, just bef after the DDT, I was like, why are they still going? Mm -hmm. They done hit each other with finishes. And so then Garcia hulked up. And when he turned around, the crowd shouted, you. I was like, whoa, this yeah. crowd, one, is a smart crowd. Two, knows, the, knows a little bit of history. But then again, that's like common as common as Hogan's name. So the fact that they even did that undermined it, what these two were trying to do, which was not much because this match didn't mean anything. And do you know what stopped him from his onslaught, from Daniel Garcia's onslaught? You know what stopped him? MJF spat on him. Which grossed us out. It was disgusting. So I'm gonna take a moment to ask this question. What the hell is up with all the damn spit in wrestling? Why are they spitting like it was the most newly discovered and devastating I, wrestling move? I don't know who started it. But to show outright and absolute disgust at your opponent when you're about to lose or you just can't take no more, you spit on them. That's what was done, and I do not think that was an indie show. I do not think that was an indie show. And at that juncture, it just, that popped the crowd. We'll do it too. And then everyone's doing it's it. It's disgusting. Naito. Pop of the crowd in, is gross. In Japan, Naito was the most notorious for doing it. So after that, they ate German suplexes and laid on the mat for a little bit. They go into a series of signature submissions, which seems to be a Garcia thing, I think. MJF ended with the rings of Saturn and leg pick, but Garcia got his bottom leg over the bottom rope. Garcia got a lovely looking picture perfect power driver for a two count. Mm -hmm. I so disagree with that. That power driver was absolutely epic. That should have been the end. That should have been it. MJF. Hit behind the ref, got a deep low blow, jackknife pinfall. Then after the match, because I was like, why ain't they leaving the ring? They should leave the ring. They're not leaving the ring. MJF extends his hand and Garcia has to think about it for some reason. Then they shake hands and the fans boo. MJF tries a cheap shot kick and Garcia catches the foot. Low blow kicks him in the, you know, kick, kick, kicks him real low um, to, a, to a nice cheer. 
Garcia hit the superpower driver for the fans' delight. Garcia kisses MJF on the forehead and leaves to the fans, walking as if he wasn't even in a match. No, it, doesn't, it doesn't make any sense to kick someone in the balls to get the win and then extend your hand. Absolutely <laughs> stupid. What? <laughs> Now, if you did that to a heel on your on your level, if they shake hands, it's like respect, man. I would have done it too. That's usually what that would be. But I, I was like, this was stupid. Mm-hmm. So then we get the tag team title match: Claudio Castagnoli and Wheeler Yuta versus the Young Bucks. Matt Jackson showed them up a bit and then posed all the while Yuta and Claudio looked on. Instead of attacking them from behind. They looked on stunned that he had his back to them and posing, but they didn't do anything about it. Not a damn thing. So I was done. Skip. <laughs> the Bucks retained after a long match. Didn't care. AEW International title match. Um, that's what it's called, right? The International belt? Yeah. Something like that? Yeah. Pack versus Will Ospreay. Uh, so after many gymnastic flips on onto each other in and out of the ring, they hit double boot kicks and laid down like it was a finisher. Pack hit a vertical high angle suplex, barely sold it, and end up using a side headlock afterwards. <sighs> Not even thirty seconds later, they're on the outside, fresh and fighting. We skipped. Yep. We skipped. Osprey hit the trapped arm De Beers special as a setup for the forearm strike that from behind, and he got the pin. Styles Class is a setup for his finisher. Y'all heard that right? The Styles Class, a move that is actively a finisher. Yep. And Cedric had to take notes that the red stars on all of the graphics and links them to CM Punk's attire while he was in AEW. He always had stars down the side of his trunks. Red stars. They put stars all over the logo, all over the big, the big thing, the big sign over the stage. You know, because they're in Chicago, and um, the young bucks are petty, and Tony Khan is stupid. You know, Punk had moved on, making far more money, wrestling less. You know, or making less money, but having an actual legacy. I'm sure he's making more money. He might be. It's just. As they can't, they can't let it go. They can't let children. Them go. Yeah, I get it, everybody. There's things that happen to us, and look, we are the way we are because we've been scarred in life. That I get that. There are things that we can't let go of that drives our actions today, and people can say, oh, "I don't got no." No, no, you do, because there's stupid stuff you do, and if you link it back, it's probably because of some stupid stuff in the past. Either your aggressive entitlement. Or somebody's aggressive entitlement over you, you. Or parents did something. Friends did something. There's some trauma, some anger, some something. Or you just never had a problem, so you're affluent, and you're just messing up. It's, it's something. You ain't getting away from it. And these guys are full of all of that crap. But they caused all the problems. They caused all of it. And they're traumatized by their own... They're trying to bury him. They keep trying to bury Punk. But it's not going to work. No, it won't. <laughs> So next we get a the, the Chicago street fight, yeah. So, cause you know they're in Chicago. It's damn. I hate when that. I hate that whoever started that crap. Cause ECW had the Philadelphia street fight because they was mainly in Philadelphia, and then others started having a street fight. But then it's like, hey, we're gonna pop for you like Sonata. This is my favorite town. <laughs> so. This is way back in the day, and it's like, you know, we're going to have a street fight, but it's going to be a street fight, your area street fight. And they're like, yay! And now people is like, all right, man, it's a street fight where we are, cool. Just because you name it after us don't mean we give a damn, because we know what's, what's coming. But in this case, yes, no, maybe so, but this was probably the match of the night. Yeah. Willow Nightingale versus Chris Statlander. No count out, no DQ. Okay. And I guess you could say lazy booking on that. But if it's a street fight, that can't be a DQ. Or you know what I would do? It's relaxed rules. If somebody came in that's not a part of the situation just to start a storyline, 
then that'd be a DQ and then you start that next storyline. That's how I would do that. No count out, that's fine. False count anywhere should have been it because it's a street fight. Anyway, Willow got uh, Willow got a pounce in carry and, and then a carrying buckle bomb in the opening. Statlander tried the apron bomb, but when thwarted, she used a chair to, to stun Willow. She nailed her in the back with it. Mm -hmm. Then she got a power bomb of her own onto the announce table that collapsed in sections. That was good. Now, yeah, I thought that was really good. Some might think that was cheap or whatnot. No, you didn't know that thing was going to break down. And the way it broke down, it just, that was good. Yeah. I thought it was nice. It looked like a train wreck. Yes, it a train good. wreck. Like it shouldn't have broke, but it did. I like I liked that. Statlander, um, she ran at, <laughs> she ran and put a nice stomp to Willow. These girls was laying it in. Mm -hmm. Willow rolled off the floor, the floored table uh evading a swanton but statlander she she her upper body went through the table her legs slammed on the back of willow's head and her back. legs almost to her hip i mean that was man but you know and, and willow she you could see a grimace like damn <laughs> willow pounced chris through the barricade it was nice yes it was uh look they was it looked like they was laying it in. It looked like they was doing a real good job. Yes. Um, the women fought to the top of the stage where Chris shouts for Stokely to get the stuff. He gets an ECW trash can full of stuff. Because that's where that started. ECW, trash can. They got hockey sticks and all this other stuff that you're probably not going to see or use during this fight. But, you know, it's aesthetics. So a bad moment. Chris tried to suplex Willow onto the trash can but missed I mean, just, Willow's, I was like, her back going to be hurting. Just hit the dang stage, man. Yep. Just. And commentary tried to sell that Willow evaded it. I'm like, Willow was taking it in, in midair. You can't invade in midair. <laughs> Willow hit Chris with a set of light tubes that, you know, might have hard weighed Statlander. So, it might have. Or she played it herself and then we finally saw it. Either way, it, I was like, it's, it's, it's the women. It's going to be up high. And it's not going to be much blood. This ain't Hokuto and them. This, this is today's beauty pageantries. Um, after a good strike exchange, Chris spears Willow off the stage and onto the cover table that they always have miscellaneously by the stage. But it looked good. It did look good. It looked real good. Um, they, they got back into the ring and began fighting, which looked good. Willow gets a, got a chain. Chris got a black bag full of either glass tacks or Legos <laughs> Willow grinds the chain into Chris's head and then bit the area spit the blood out she drank a sip of her blood and then Chris pours tacks tax. onto the mat ruining the great joy for us sort of but then it was made up with a missed axe kick and split onto the tax by Chris so that was nice Willow hit a Death Valley driver on the tax for a two count Chris hit a rolling lariat uh, with the chain for a two count and um, then Chris, had, I don't know why she did it, but she got the chain, had the strap. I guess they're picking on WWE strap match, but it was the chain with the straps, and, and she took her a while to get it on the Willow. Willow had to act like she was fighting back because it was like taking too damn long. And, and then Willow punched her, and then Chris headbutted her, and Willow sold the shit out of that. Mm -hmm. I was like, that looks good, but it was too far in between. Because it looked like Willow was getting ready to get her arm you know, uh, 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 like a syringe in her arm at the at the nurses' station or something. <laughs> it was taking so long. Um, they kept fighting each other without letting up, though. That was good. Mm -hmm. Chris hit a tombstone, and instead of pinning, she wraps a chain around the head and mouth of Willow and pulls back until Willow surrenders. So my question was like this: Does it make sense for Chris to mindlessly turn on Willow, beat her down for weeks or months, and then at the pay per view the heel win? That. Maybe it's going to keep going. I don't, I don't know. It might. But that should have been Willow's match. Yeah. But Statlander looked good the whole time. She, Willow looked this good. This is the best that Statlander has looked. Yep. So next we get the Continental title match. So it's a four-way. It's Orange Cassidy, Kanosuke Takeshita, Mark Briscoe, and they're all vying for the belt held by Kazuchika Okada. And my thoughts were, okay, Orange Cassidy is a golden boy that's hard to kill like a roach. Kanosuke Takeshita... He's like better than, I'm going to say, 
He's better than the champion and Cassidy. I'm going to say that much. And Briscoe is the Ring of Honor world champion. Why is he going for this second-rate novelty belt that don't... It's stupid, but it, Mark got hard weight outside the ring at some point, and that could have been when Konosuke did his topic on Hito, but I didn't really check it, didn't really care. Um, Orange and Mark seemed to lay their elbow... Uh, seem to lay their elbow exchange in after playfully light chopping and high fiving. <sighs> Okada and Takeshita, they had a delicate elbow exchange. Mark hit the J driller on Konosuke for a saved two count. Konosuke hit the dashing knee bomb for a saved two count. Konosuke pauses a forearm so Cassidy can put his hands in his pockets and get his stuff in. Okada hit the return clothesline on Cassidy after he hit it on Mark and got the pin on Cassidy. So Okada retains. Uh, you know, I guess they just had to put people in this match, but Konosuke looked good, and I, I feel sad for him that he is here in AEW. Yep. Konosuke is absolutely wonderful, and it, it, it saddens me. And now we get the Turner Broadcast Stations title. <laughs> Hikaru Shida uh, versus Mercedes Monet or Money. Canadians want more money. More money. More money. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> so, <laughs> Mercedes wants more money. <laughs> she's gonna dance her dance and she wants more money. <laughs> CEO. CEO. Give me some money. I'm not your friend. So they got lost at the opening as they ran to the ropes. I get misdirection, but they looked like they were legit lost. And then we we noted that she'd have put on weight and might need to start adding some power moves since most of the women are tiny. And we got sick and tired of the flubs and stuff, so we skipped super super long match that ends with money tossing Sheeta to the mat from the gory position she got the pin so AEW world title I I messed up and took some notes my bad y'all um but Jack Perry versus Brian Danielson this is allegedly Brian's final match and his first defense that he's going to win I mean you know he's going to win this Jack damn Perry. Yep. You know, is is Jack Perry. And this is his first defense. And Brian comes out, you know, to the 100 plus thousand dollar theme. And Cedar was upset because He's the of his interest. champion. He had no pyro. He did not stop on the stage. The camera didn't show him on the stage. He practically ran to the ring. He just did that sideways running thing he likes to do sometimes. They showed that from a great distance. When he got in the ring, there was no pyro. Okay, the final countdown part got to the song of the song came up and the crowd was there and that was great. They was all about it. But this is your champion. Had Shinya, Mashi, Shinya Hashimoto's big match in, uh, introduction. Uh, with the lights circling and stuff like that. But it won't colored lights. It was all white lights. No pyro, no pause, no soaking in, no adoration, nothing. Pat. Pat had the best pyro the whole night. Pat. He had better a better pyro than Osprey. And Osprey was the champion in that match. Yep. I, I don't I don't understand it. <laughs> yep. <sighs> So, if this is Brian's last match, why the hell would they pick Perry, the failed platypus, <laughs> to go against him? Anyway, Perry super kicked Brian, who dove off the apron. Just, <sighs> but he kicked him in the abdomen. Brian sold the jaw. I was like, ah, oh, crap. You know, a decent match called by. Danielson, you know Danielson's calling this match. We're just not all that into it. Nah. But I still took a crap ton of notes and I, I'm trying to figure out why. I don't know. I don't I don't I don't know why I did this. I think you got into some kind of rhythm. 
I don't. Yeah, but they, I guess they weren't worth the time. The match was not worth the time. Like, okay, like, notes. like Brian hit an avalanche backdrop. They both sold well. Perry applied Brian's counter mutilation. Uh, chop kick exchange on the apron, but Perry had a had to, you know, swipe his hair out of his face. You know, he had time to do that. You know, so he can see and look pretty. Brian hit a butterfly suplex from the apron to the floor, and made Perry hit as flat as possible to make a louder sound, which was good. Danielson hit a diving knee to the arm. Perry applied the STF, and Brian got to the ropes. Inside credit with Brian pinning the ref, counts two and touches them for some reason. I guess and let them know to kick out. I don't know. That was weird. Mm -hmm. Brian. Uh, was to collide into the ref in the corner, but the camera angle showed that he never touched him. The Young Bucks run in, and she just says two pimps entered the ring attacking. They look like pimps and sneakers. Bucks hit a diving spike pile driver on Danielson. Sockface, did you see the arms drop? I'm like, I hate you. Anyway, Claudio runs them off. Perry calls them back, but they're being chased. Perry hit, Perry hits a running knee for a two count. Perry does the stomps to the face and then the yes taunt in the corner and gets countered with the flying knee bomb. Perry flew to the side like a heap of trash. Yeah, really. It's like, how in the world did you do that? <laughs> Perry recovers with Brian and trade poor elbows what got better when they got to their feet. Perry slaps him and Brian turns on the mean. They exchange moves for a reset and I knew what this was. I was like, okay, they're trying to build to a five star at this juncture because you can feel it. But I was like, it was. I'll get to that later. But Brian hits a super kick. No, he Brian eats a super kick, hits the flying knee bomb for a two count, and Perry like he fought like a fish. He just, I mean, come on, Perry. Man, Perry kicked out but didn't do anything. So why not go for the pin again? Brian stomps his head in to a chorus of yeses and then repeats it. Perry sits up and does a raven taunt, giving Brian a free open, unchallenged shot with the knee bomb, and then he got the pin. That shit was stupid. Yeah, That's what I wrote. That shit was stupid. Well, to be honest, I know they were built into a five-star match, but the run-in killed a great deal of it. And then Perry being beaten, uh, Perry being beaten like, just just like like he's got beat with an ugly stick unchallenged just yeah here i am instead of giving you the middle fingers i would just i would just do the raven taunt and then just take a knee to the face just give up yep just i'm like why do people do that that's so stupid y'all know how to, how to finish a match apparently not I, after the match luchasaurus attacks brian stares at jack Christian Cage comes out and plan to cash in his shot for the title. Goon shows up in street clothes blocking the patriarchy. Pac and the rest of the BCC show up and the patriarch backs off. Goon hugs Brian in the ring. Then Claudio uppercuts Brian who looks on in shock from the mat. Goon puts a plastic bag over Brian's head. Yuta tries to fight, quote unquote fight. A woman enters the ring. Pack holds Yuta while Brian dies without <laughs> ripping the plastic. The fans, and I'm writing this quick as I can, real time, and right as I get to uh, ripping the plastic, the fans are chanting, this it is murder. murder. And I'm like, yeah. And then yeah. she just says, this was just dumb. This was just dumb. And you know it's all goon. This is all goons doing. The, you take a plastic bag and put it over your head and almost kill you. The medics rip the bag open. They're, they're stronger than the wrestler. Yeah. Then they get oxygen to Brian and a pulse monitor on his finger. And with no gurney, they carry him out. Arms and legs. Yep. I'll be honest with you, man. <laughs> Even Jean Claude's character got better treatment than Kickboxer. No, his brother got better treatment. <laughs> they put him on a little gurney. <laughs> they sent him outside <laughs> to die. <laughs> to die. <laughs> with his fracture spine. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> At least he had a gurney. <laughs> and, and the gurney wasn't much beyond carrying him with his arms and legs. That's, that's how you got to carry it. He had no wheels. So, if, and I had to note, if AW was presented as legit, a fan or two would have jumped the railing. Yep. But the fans are so, they know it's a work. 
they know AEW is full of crap. So they were just, this is murder. They was, they weren't saying that you're actually killing them. They're saying, they're saying this looks like murder attempt. Yeah. This looks like you are killing somebody. This does not look like wrestling. Nope. And so, and then she had to say, uh, this is all Moxley's idea. It's and I was all, like, it's, it's oh, all, why don't you call him Moxley? That's goon. It's all goon. You know it was all his idea. And you know what makes it even worse? That Danielson went along with it. That is what makes this worse. That he heard that and thought, okay. okay. If I was Danielson's wife and I saw him post this bullshit, he would be a well beaten man because apparently he does not care for his life anyway so I can just beat the fuck out of him anytime I want to you I I would beat him or I would divorce him because that was dumb you don't know you what know divorce of somebody making millions of dollars a year she would get half you <laughs> let's just be clear about that they got two kids she would get half you do not play with plastic bags over the head and breathing and be like, oh, you can pull it off and it'd be okay. You don't know that. You don't know what could go wrong. There could be a pre-existing condition that he don't know about and he dies. What, what, what is wrong with these people? So yes, either he would be a well-beaten man or he would be a divorced man. You want to do stuff like that? You can do it about being married to me. Because you're obviously incredibly stupid. What if he apologized and made and said, I'm going to make it right, and he, and he tells you how he's going to make it all right? What if that happens? Uh-huh. Not good enough? I don't know. That was dumb. She's a man-eater. A man-eater? She's eater. never satisfied. What okay. other, what other a, can we do? You can explain away, you know what, okay, I cheated on you, you know. But if you cheat... You at least are going to live the next day to be a father to your children, right? Yeah. You're a doing, worthless individual. They're, they're doing a the thing that they tell children not to do. Exactly. And so, you know. Exactly. And, and what? There, were, there wasn't even a disclaimer. Kids, uh, kids watch this stuff, right? Did you see a disclaimer? No, no disclaimer. They'll probably do one on Wednesday or something. But this, remember, this happened on the, the, the 9th, I think. So it's been a while. I can't believe they didn't get any backlash for that. We don't know if they did or didn't. We don't know. I haven't listened to Jim Cornette. When I saw Jim Cornette it started up there, I was like, wait, what 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 pay-per-view? And then I was like, oh crap. So that's why we watched it today. Ugh. Which is the not which is uh September thirteenth. This is my mom's birthday. Um D but Ugh. yeah. It's just we got one more match. And no, and no, look, 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 look. Every, remember everything that, that, what's his name? Uh, what is his name? The Which commentator. One? The hat. JR. JR. Everything that JR was saying, that was not a work. Nope. <laughs> that was not a work. This is goddamn stupid. This is. <laughs> not all my 50 years of. Uh huh. None of what he said was a work. You could hear it, you could feel it. Like, what is this crap and y'all are doing? And you see Taz, Taz took his, his sunglasses off and was looking like, what did I just see? Uh-huh. You, you, you can see all of that. So Tony Fisher, Tony Schiavone, he was just sitting there did like Did you a, see it? He had, he had his hands <laughs> over his nose. Like, 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 oh my God. And I'm like, man. I. Uh-huh. What have y'all done? <laughs> I saw the bag when they broke it out and I thought no nah. okay I can get the threat there are plenty of really dumbass things in wrestling that have been threatened but they get thwarted you know what I'm talking about yeah you all know, the time the we've, seen the, to the head. we've seen it over and over again no they did it uh huh they put in black bags over people's head but that's not necessarily suffocating and they beat them down they take the bag off or they leave them under the bag but it's usually a big, big bag. You know, the one they put the tax in and stuff. It's cloth. Yeah. You can tell it's cloth. So, now we get to the, the, the second part of the main event, which is the unsanctioned cage match. And I'm like, it's so unsanctioned, y'all got it on pay-per-view. <sighs> y'all got, got riffs. Yep. 
Adam Page versus Swerve Strickland. Win conditions is knockout, pinfall, or submission. I was like, sounds pretty uh basic. You know, it's a cage match. So they lowered the cage, and as the cage lowered, they uh they was fighting while Nana slid in what furnishings he could. And later, Swerve uh had Adam in a chokehold with one arm while stapling his back with the other. That was funny. I'm gonna say that that he, was funny. He stapled paper to Adam's face and then ripped it off. It was um, a picture of his family. Yep. Though it was the wrong home, I think Swerve should be more fired up that uh, fired up that um, the, his place of dwelling was burned to the ground. Yeah, like, it was his childhood home. You know, so Swerve hit the vertebraker on a cinder block. Adam's back is now. I, I, I we 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 try. I tried to get this right, but Adam's back. Uh, is heavily abraded. You did get it right. It's just two words that use for are are, are used for the same thing. Okay. There's it's abraded and there's abraded. It's just that that system doesn't accept abraded. Yeah, I'm using uh, libre office. Um, no pen attempt on that though, even though it was a center block. It was skin up though. It was oh yeah, bleeding and shit. Uh, Swerve hit a riding double foot stomp from the top onto a table. Uh, no pen attempt. Page hit the dead eye for a two count. Page holds burned wood from the wrong burned house. They battle over the object trying to stab each other. Swerve wins the battle and punches Page with the wood in his hand. Um, if, you, if I have some burned wood and I'm stabbing somebody, they're going to be really cut up. They're going to look gnarled after that. There was none of that. So Swerve holds the burned wood, sobbing. And then takes a low blow. Page power bomb swerve onto the center block for a two count, and which was stupid because mm-hmm. he could have he could have broke his back. He could tear up some muscles real bad. He could have he could permanently injure him with so, uh, so much slip discs. Yep. Um. Just 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 think. I watched uh, Stevie Richards. And one of his injuries was he fell out the ring and didn't hold on to the ropes. He just free fell to the floor and then pushed two of his uh, lower spinal uh, 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 bones, vertebrae, out of, out of place. And I'm like, that had to feel like crap. Mm-hmm. Uh, Swerve power bombs Page onto the cage and then hit him with a flying side kick to the back of the head. Swerve hit the move again, but for a two count. Swerve climbs to the very top of the cage, but Page catches him and hits an avalanche power bomb. And then they both just got up. Just got up. They just got up. They just got up. Page hit the dead eye for a two count. So that's, that's twice. Page gets a chair, demands Swerve to beg for mercy, and then hits him with it. Swerve laughs as he gets up, holding up two fingers. I guess that says, I got my, I got two wins over you. Or Yeah, I, I think that's it. I, I guess. Yeah. And then he collapsed. Then Page pulls out, pulls the gold out of Swerve's mouth. I'm like... That was nasty. Mm-hmm. Uh, Page has a syringe, and I was like, "What? What are you doing?" Yeah. And he stabbed Swerve in the mouth with it, or for, through the or through the cheek, the cheek or something, so that just stayed there for some. I don't know why he did that. I was like, you know, going on certain things that gives a real jacked up connotation, and it's stuff like that that certain groups can go after you for, and we'll get run you out of business they can they certain groups could possibly sue them into the ground parents could possibly sue them into the ground for certain representations or possible representations so stuff like that you need to think about before you do it you really do um page got a chair and wax word with it and it was loud trying to do what dreamer did to raven just Ref- free just free handed he just hit him in the head over the top of the head with a chair Ref- no hands up no nothing yep Ref rings the bell before he can adequately check on swerve to see if there was a knockout page wins via knockout so while Swerve lays laying unconscious, he was talking to the medical attendees, and then he stopped talking to him because he had to be unconscious again. Um, Adam Page was at the top of the ramp, threatened to go back. Then he stopped. He went back. He just got on his knees and started yelling. I don't get it. I don't know. He was just yelling. I don't know if he was hype or 
That's it was so all I don't, crazy. Yeah, I don't I don't know which it was, but yeah. If you want to know what this event was like, just go in the bathroom and flush the toilet. Yeah, and then try to cheer about it. <laughs> this was awful. It was awful. As, aside from the fact that from a spectator's point of view and one who likes wrestling, it's completely awful. It sucked from a business point of view. Why are you going to do business in such a way that can hamper your ability to do business in the future? Exactly. If you let your kid watch this pay-per-view, let's say they've been an AEW watch the whole time, and you get this this pay-per-view premium pay premium paid event, whatever you want to call it. No, it's and a pay-per-view. You, and you watch it with your kid, and you see that. Are you gonna be able to watch AEW anymore? Uh, I'll be honest with you. I'll be like, what the hell? You ain't watching this? No, no. Look, our kid has watched some jacked up stuff. But it won't this. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And then after the bag, a syringe. I hate you so bad. I want to bring a syringe and then stick it through your face. It's like he had it. Though. Didn't he have it in his pocket? He, he had it in his jacket. Whew. Yeah. I wonder what the fallout could possibly be from this event because that that was atrocious. That was atrocious. If I was Chicago, I'd be like, "Don't come, don't come back here that, no that more. Y'all ain't worth it. Y'all ain't worth it." So that that's gonna do it for us. This has been Cedric and Cedric for CR Wrestling commentary on AEW's pay per view of All Out. And with that, despite this event, we want y'all to be cool, be chill, be safe. Don't use syringes or cinder blocks or plastic bags. And don't turn on the people that got you where you are and a whole lot of other stuff at least there was no fire and make sure if you're going to dress like a pimp you actually look like a damn man and with that we'll see you next time